Atmospherics tutorial for total beginners, episode 2. Let's take a look at the gases in station years. Nitrous oxide and, well, polluted water isn't a gas, but in a way it's a gas. Depends on how you look at it. Water, pollutant, volatiles, carbon dioxide, nitrogen and oxygen. We are already rather familiar with. Here we have its phase change diagram. It's what? Well, in reality, oxygen can actually become liquid if it's cold enough or under enough pressure and or under enough pressure. It can even freeze solid. Um, that's also simulated by this game. The values are not quite realistic, but that's not the point. The vertical axis is the pressure. The horizontal axis is the temperature. So you can see here, uh, at low pressure, we would have to cool down rather a lot to um, make it liquid. But if you add enough pressure, then we still have to be at very low temperatures, but not quite that low anymore. Everybody knows when water freezes is the definition of the Celsius scale. It's zero degrees Celsius. You can see here that the chart is not quite um, precise, because if you go to 100 Celsius, then the pressure that we need is 78 kilopascals uh, for it to boil, but in reality that's 101 kilopascals. So, in other words, if the pressure is higher, then uh, the point where it would become a gas is also higher. And that is simulated in here, just like in reality. Now let's look at pollutant. It's kind of a crazy gas. Look at this. This is the phase change diagram. At, um, let's look at the mouse uh, cursor. At this pressure of like, um, let's say, um, 100 kilopascals, maybe, you have to cool it down a lot for it to become a solid. It will not become a liquid. But when you pressurize it enough, then even at minus 93 degrees, it will be a liquid or even at 142. So this, this gas is completely crazy. And that's a problem. Look here. A canister with pollutant. And it's a rather high pressure. But you can see that some of it is actually liquid. Because the pressure is so high. And here you can see that the pipe is under stress. Because gas pipes are not made for liquids. They can hold a pressure of up to 60 megapascals for a sense of scale. Here on the right we can see the target pressure the spacesuit has been set to, that's 101 kilopascals, is uh, the same pressure uh, like on Earth at sea level. So 60 megapascals, 60,000 kilopascals, is about 600 times that. Here we can see liquid pipes. They can only hold 6 uh, megapascals, uh, so 60 times the Earth's sea level pressure. But you can put water in them, uh, liquids, pollutant, gas, it doesn't matter. They take anything. As long as it's not frozen. Frozen? Frozen is bad. Yep, pipes gone. Same for liquid pipes. No frozen stuff, please. So let's take a look at the various gases and mixtures. First, some oxygen, please. Yeah, I tricked a bit. Um, so now we have some gas in here to breathe. Oxygen and some CO2. Where's that coming from? From our lungs, obviously. Hey, you know what? Let's invite pollutant to the party and see what happens. Toxin critical. Oh. That's not good. It's not. Not sure if something's in our suit now. Possibly or possibly not. I'm not sure how this works yet. This makes sure that we don't have anything else in there. Hmm, so now we have some pollutant our, in our station. For example, if you ran the arc furnace and smelled some iron or something. How do we get rid of this? I mean, we have some oxygen, some CO2, but lots of pollutant. We don't want the pollutant. Sounds like a case for the portable scrubber. Okay, that seems to help a lot. Uh, make no mistake, we're right, we're right here where the scrubber is, further away. Okay. 4% right over here, 3% right over here, yeah but it's still a bit more the further away it is. And this thing is now filling up. 
Hey, you know what? <laughs> we can cheat, you know. We can just deconstruct and the pollutant will be gone. No, it won't be gone. It will just be released. Oh, by the way, even with closed hammer, we still have the pollution problem. Yep, the flushing is required once you have had it open in this environment. So now we can either turn on the scrubber. Or we could, of course, just employ such a setup. And if you put an active vent here, I mean with a pipe, because you cannot connect a device with a device directly. This, though, is not a device. This counts like as a pipe. Um, then it would be much, much, much faster. Not into our oxygen canister uh, tank, of course. No, I'm just saying, in principle, you could, could make your own scrubber. You don't need the portable one. How are we doing? Oh, that looks good. Ah. Good. And it's slowly filling up. But there's not much more to be filled into it, so for now, we're fine. So what's next? Oh, volatiles and oxygen. Two-thirds volatiles, one-third oxygen. That is exactly what fuel gas is. Toxin critical. And it's uh, flammable. Well, then there's volatiles, which are at the core of all burning processes, but they're harmless as long as you don't mix them with oxygen. Oops. Next up is water. And it's uh, very hot because I want it in, the, it in the form of steam, because this is a gas can canister and a gas pipe. Temperature high. Yeah, so let's close that helmet. Um, so now we have the gas in here in this room. Interestingly, it's not foggy. Now it is because I added some uh, water at uh, room temperature, basically. See, they don't yet have standing water in stationers. And so if there's some water in the room that is not gas, then it will be intransparent like this, like mist. That's the idea. And then here we have polluted water. That's water that you get, for example, from showering. I think that's even the only example that exists so far. It's rather young, maybe two or three months old. So again, showering results in polluted water. The pipes are here underground, but uh, if you stick out a pipe from the network like this, you can take a peek. This also works through walls, of course, so that can be a useful trick. With a water purifier and some charcoal, you can clean up the water, again, to pure water. But there's other ways. You see, I didn't put polluted water in here and pure H2O. This happened by itself. On the right you could see, the symbol means it's liquid. That's the same kind of uh, um, symbol for um, other gases too. So here we have polluted water that has turned liquid, or I put it in there as a liquid right away. On the left we have H2O, gas. So polluted water would off-gas to pure water. So that's another way to clean that. Here's what it looks like if it gets much hotter. You can see the polluted water is evaporating into H2O. Sadly there's no um, remainder, so I mean in my opinion there should be something like, I don't know, pollutant maybe? But they don't have that. Yet, question mark. Next up is nitrous oxide. Let's see what that's like. Oh, seems to be friendly. No problems. Cognition low. Oh, but if it's a lot more, then... Well, it's laughing gas that the dentists would use, right? That's the cliche. Anyway. And then Cognition critical. it slides out. Uh, let's look at uh, CO2 and nitrogen last. Then we have volatiles and nitrous oxide, which are an even more potent fuel uh, than O2 and volatiles in a 1 to 2 mixture. This is a 1 to 1 mixture and um, not good for our lungs. Supposedly, I thought. Well, the pressure is very low. If I <laughs> but anyway, it burns very well. Temperature high. 
Yeah, and this stuff is really dangerous. I mean, it's almost impossible to keep around without blowing up. You can see the temperature is increasing for whatever reason. And now it's actually already on fire. Just because, I don't know, too much pressure? <laughs> oh, 70 megapascals? Well, doesn't this mean that... Oh, that's what it means. Oh, well. Mission critical. Hmm. So, I wonder what nitrogen does. Hmm, that is a dangerous sounding name. Nitrogen. Nitrogen. Huh. Hmm. Underwhelming question mark? No, not quite. On Earth we have about 20% oxygen and 79% nitrogen and then uh, some trace gases um, and of course CO2. So not a surprise. What about the CO2 then? Same thing, no one cares. Not a problem. At least the station here is. In reality, more than 1% CO2 would be a problem, and uh, it's really a he health hazard. The feeling that you get from, uh, from suffocation is not the absence of oxygen, it's the overabundance of CO2. Now, what if we wanted to plant something and we wouldn't have this ridiculous amount of CO2 in here yet? Yeah, kind of like this. Seconds later. Yeah, these things are made to empty out hangars. We would somehow have to get some CO2 in here. Because one of the most used plants uh, of all of them, uh, potatoes, they breathe in carbon dioxide, CO2. So do most. Other plants also. Mushrooms are weird. They breathe in oxygen like we do and breathe out carbon dioxide like we do. Soybeans even breathe in carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Something to consider. And soybeans are needed for soy oil, which is needed for canned foods. So to get some CO2 we could empty our waste uh, tank, which is almost full anyway. You know, 4 megapascals slightly over that and that's the end of it. You saw that in episode 1. But that's not enough, even though the room is rather small. How do we get CO2 in here, other than by breathing? Well, by using the furnace, of course. Here, I have some fuel gas in here. Let's release some of that into the furnace. Thank you, that's enough. And then set it on fire. You see, CO2, and most of it even is CO2, and tons of pollutant. And lots of heat. Hmm. Can we make use of this? The furnace's output pipe leads right down here to our station. And here we have a filtration unit with a CO2 filter. And whatever comes out as waste gas goes out back uh, goes out the back door. Okay, so not a problem, yes? Now we're getting CO2. Oh, and it's getting hot. Hmm. What a surprise. So that doesn't work. For sure, if you wait long enough, then uh, the furnace will have cooled down. Not a problem. But what if you're in a hurry? If you look here at the pipe, well, let's just talk about the um, tablet for now. Here we can see the pressure in megapascals. Megapascal is a thousand kilopascal. Uh, and 101 kilopascal earth sea level pressure, like we already said. Um, then uh, here's the temperature in Celsius. Um, Kelvin is the same, uh, except, um, well, okay, let's continue. Uh, are there any liquids in there currently? No. Uh, what capacity do these pipes have for, for liquids? Uh, the, the volume is 70 liters. One pipe has uh, 10 liters. If it would be a liquid pipe, that would be 20 liters. But these are all stuck together to one large body, so it's 70 liters. Stress is 0%. You know, if it reaches 100%, the pipes take damage. And that happens when there's, for example, freeze frozen gas in there, when the pressure is too high, <clears throat> or if there are liquids in there. Then we have latent heat. Complicated tema, uh, complicated topic. And then we have radiated uh, heat uh, and um, convected uh, heat. So currently, there's no gas out here. This is the vacuum. This is the vacuum. This is the moon. 
so nothing is being touched away to the atmosphere. But radiated away is a lot. And up here we have pipe radiators. Hmm. Now 30, 20 something kilojoules are being radiated, radiated away. Down here we have like 6 uh, joules and this is uh, about 10,000 joules. That is how strong these things are. So the pipe is cooling down rapidly. And the pressure in here is 6 megapascals. The pressure in here is also 6 megapascals. So new hot gas from the furnace can only stream over here if the pressure here is lower. And the pressure here is lowering because some gas is streaming through this valve up here and is cooling down. Cooling down means the volume decreases and so the furnace can add some more gas. The gas in the furnace is still hot and so this is heated up again. But ultimately it's falling down. But what's this? We're on the moon. How is there some pollutant out here? Is there an opening? No, there, there's no opening anywhere. Except here. That thing is a passive liquid drain. The kit liquid drain has a few useful things. One of them, the passive liquid drain for gas pipes. If there's some liquid in there, it will seep out here. At a high rate, but not at an infinite rate. So depending on how much liquid is in there, maybe you want to slap some more on onto the pipe. Then we have the active liquid outlet, which will just pump from a liquid pipe into the room when it is turned on. So yeah, it needs to be powered. And we have the um, passive liquid uh, inlet. And yeah, that means that if you have a liquid pipe connected to this thing and you have some uh, water vapor in, your air, in the air, it will actually go into the pipes. So that's one way to get some drinking water. Just toss down some water you find here. Uh, yeah. Ooh, the pipe is getting mighty cold. Wonder what happens now. <laughs> now it's cooling down. What I showed you here is not the way to go. This is not something to be imitated. I'm just showing concepts. I never did it like this and it's pretty uncontrolled. I bet the temperature in there is nose diving while we're trying to suck this thing dry. So it would probably be destroyed by means of freezing gases. I'm just showing some options here. So, with a pressure between 50 and 100 kilopascals, which is ideal for plants, not necessary, but ideal, and um, more than 1% CO2, and a water temperature, that's very important, of uh, 20 degrees, 10 degrees will also be fine, but it shouldn't be below zero or above 50 or something, we can just start planting our plants. And you should never plant all your seeds at once, because it's too risky. Once you don't have any more seeds, you need to do quite some legwork to, to get more. That's it for today. I believe next time we will deal with how to protect your tanks and canisters from overpressurizing when you refill them. See ya. Critical. Suit critical. Pressure critical. Jetpack critical. Toxin critical.